Hey there everybody! Well, since I started studying aerospace engineering, I thought it would be fun to actually make these cool uh, fluid simulation pictures you sometimes see of like airfoils or cars. And uh, today I'm going to show you how to create them in a very simple way in Blender. And um, these are some of the um, things you can see. Well, this blue one uh, shows the acceleration of the particles. So, for example, around the airfoil, the velocity is changed to zero or sometimes uh, to another velocity in opposite direction. So the acceleration is very high. Uh, this one shows uh, the density of the air around the airfoil. So you can see below the airfoil there's a high pressure. Uh, above the airfoil there's low pressure. So, well, this is basically what makes a wing fly. Uh, this shows the direction of the particles. And um, you might have seen pictures like this of aluminium particles in water, which are actually tested in real life uh, to, to show very similar uh, images. And this finally shows the actual speed of the air. So in front of the um, airfoil, there's a so-called stagnation point where velocity is zero. Uh, here, the red part is a very high velocity. And yeah, you can actually use this method on any objects. Uh, here, I used it on Susan. And um, yeah, it's actually pretty fun to see which objects create which shapes of uh, yeah of, of, of these images and um, yeah I hope you will enjoy this tutorial so let's just get to it um, what we will be able to do after this tutorial is create in a, basically a particle simulation which in the end shows you these images and um, I'm going to show you how to render them in a very quick way and uh, how to achieve the different uh, things like velocity, acceleration and density. So let's start by opening up a new uh, blend file and um, oh, let me just very quick uh, at the screencast. Um. Okay so what we are going to start with is delete everything we have right here. So I'll just hit X to delete. And um, the first thing I will add is, well, our, basically our ex experiment chamber. Um, you might know this from uh, like flu fluid simulations or smoke simulations that you sometimes need a domain object. Well, we are, we are using the uh, particle system which is built in, in Blender and uh, this actually is not using a uh, boundary layer, boundary uh, box but I like to use one because uh, this will help um, decrease the simulation time and uh, yeah well let's get to it so I'll just add a cube in here and I will make it much thinner in the uh, y direction and um, yeah something about this is right and I think I will scale it in an X direction by 16 and in the Z direction times 9. So we got a nice uh, 16 times 9, um, yeah, like actually the screen format, which we want in the end. And I think I will scale it down a little bit uh, to make it fit more like in our area, in our scene. Uh, I will apply the scale. Uh, this is important to have the correct collisions in the end. So, uh, well, you can see now is actually quite thin compared to the rest, so I will actually <laughs> increase this. Um, you will play around with the scales to find your correct one. Um, the next thing I'll do is uh, I'll now switch into wire mode and now, now we'll actually add our emitter, which is just a plane. I will rotate it about the y-axis times 90 degrees. So this allows us to move it over here. Uh, scale it so it more or less is in the box and make sure that it's completely in the box and not somewhere outside you know this is something you definitely not want because you know then all the particles outside the box won't be used for the simulations and we'll just add up um, not unused simulation time so 
Then we just uh, take this same plane, we hit Shift D to make a duplicate, and move it to the exact opposite. And this time you want to scale the plane up so it actually um, is bigger than the uh, boundary box we created in all directions. So make sure it basically is cutting into the uh, box and is bigger than the box itself. Um, one additional thing, nah, well we, we get to that later. Well now we will set up our scene. So the first thing we do is um, I select my boundary box, I go over into the physics panel and I enable collision and um, that's basically it. Um, you want to keep this as zero and zero so to make sure that it's uh, an undisturbed flow from the emitter. Then we select the uh, the one at the, the the plane at the right. We also hit collision, and um, we also leave them at zero. But make sure to check the kill particles button, because if our particles flow from the left to the right, we want them to just disappear on the right, but not to bounce back into our simulation. This would add disturbance, and this is not what we want. Then we get to the actual fun part, which is our particle system. Uh, we go into the particle panel and we add a new particle system and I will start up with um, just to test it with 100,000 particles okay so um, I will set the end to um, of the emission to the end of my simulation which would be 250 frames um, as always you need to play around with these values um, 250 also for the lifetime so that no particle would disappear during your simulation. I will leave it as a phase and I will set it to random. I will, uh, well, you can do it anyways, but I will prefer the x value over the normal value uh, because there's no matter how the rotation is in the end, it should turn out fine. So I will, for the emitter object, I will just use, let's say, 5. Okay, now uh, what we are actually using is a fluid system, the fluid particle system. This allows us to uh, actually create a realistic simulation. And what's important to know, uh, just like with usual fluid simulations, check the multiple mass um, with size uh, button and check the size deflect and uh, enable a couple of subframes. Otherwise your simulation won't be smooth. For the display, we will actually set render to none and uh, we will uncheck the emitter and uh, on display we will set point. Now this is actually where all the magic happens. Uh, at first I want to show you the acceleration and I will leave the max at 1 for now. So if we play back the animation right now, you see, uh, well, it's not like the, in the images, right? This is because we haven't set the gravity yet. So we go to, into our scene panel and here you can see the buttons for gravity. And uh, what we actually want to have is the gravity pointing in our positive y direction. So I will just um, turn the gravity in z direction to zero in y direction to 10 and in x direction I will add a small amount of gravity let's say like 2 to um, make sure that there is some flow uh, towards our right side if we are in front view so if we play back the animation right now uh, well you can see it didn't uh, start over simulating again so uh, this is like a bug, I don't know, in Blender. Well, this should actually work right now. This is strange. Let's see why it's not working here. Turn gravity down just for fun. Let's see what happens.
think now it works. Yeah, here we go. Now it's working. It was just a bug in Blender because it didn't uh, start simulating again uh, our, our gravity. And uh, as you can see, now we have a flow from the left to the right side. And um, what I actually want it to be uh, is a little bit more dense, so I'll increase my size. But for your final uh, simulation, you should just increase the number of particles and uh, decrease the, the size because this gives you more quality um, simulation. So now for our object, um, I would like to add an airfoil. So I just add a Bezier curve and um, rotate it in the X direction. And I'll just do a very basic airfoil, um, just like this. And, uh, Let's do it like this, and uh, then take this one and rotate it up a bit. And, uh, these ones, oh, these should be. So now we can toggle cyclic. Ah, uh, well, not yet. Have to close this one first. Well, let's see what the problem is. So these all meet together, and. Uh, so here, let's get them down until I'm happy with a nice airfoil. Well, this is actually a pretty crappy uh, version, but you can play around. It's not about the uh, the airfoil itself, but um, yeah, you will you will get to that, um, I think. So now I turn this one with Alt Alt uh, C. I turn this one into a mesh. And uh, I make sure that these line up, so I hit select them both, hit Alt M, and first to last. This way I close the circle. Uh, then I go into edit mode, and uh, move it over there, and then just extrude it. And um, with the edge loop selected, I hit F to make it a face, then I select the other edge loop with Alt right click, hit F, make it a face again. And now we got our airfoil. Um, to make sure everything works fine, I select all, every, all vertices with A, and then hit Ctrl N to recalculate the normals. And now we go into our physics panel and add collision. And this is basically it. And if we scale it up, maybe a little bit. And uh, if we now hit Alt A to run the simulation, you should actually see what's going on. But as you can see, there are some mistakes. Uh, some problems over here. So what I will do is I go, I select this one, I'll increase the sub-steps, I apply the scale for everything, hit Ctrl A uh, to apply the scales, and uh, I'll make this one a little small again, and also decrease the X value a little bit. Well as you can see it's like playing around with the values until you're happy with a good uh, yeah, simulation. And as you can see, now our fluids are flowing around the object, and but it's not really like, like a real simulation because you can see that it's tearing up uh, all over the place. So you will have to wait a little bit, and after some time it might even close up itself, but I think this is just not enough particles, so I will actually go increase the particle amount and let it chew through this. And uh, I will pause the uh, simulation for the meantime, uh, the recording. So, all right, uh, back again. And um, yeah, it calculated for I think about like five or six minutes, and uh, this is the actual result. So I'm now playing back the animation and uh, actually you can see some pretty awesome pictures already. Uh, you see the um, yeah the wave, the shock wave in front of the uh, airfoil and uh, some some uh, yeah some some ripples going on and uh, moving around and uh, some free space over here, which is basically um, where the boundary layer of the airfoil exits the airfoil. So you actually now created your first simulation, and uh, well, 
I guess this is pretty much tweakable. So I would, for this simulation, I would reduce the uh, the the speed of the fluid by decreasing the um, yeah x value here. Or I could increase the amount of particles to give me a more realistic image. But um, let's just use this one to continue our simulation. So, how do we actually export this as an uh, image sequence? So, if I would just hit and, uh, render, nothing would happen because at first we don't have a camera. Because I deleted it at the beginning. So, I hit Shift A, camera, and I would go in front view and insert a camera. Um, to make sure that it's centered, I will select my airfoil, hit the point button, control, oops, uh, sorry, wrong button, control zero. And uh, now I'll zoom out a little bit. And I will actually turn this one into an autographic camera. So I'll get rid of all the perspective stuff happening here. And I will just decrease the uh, increase the scale so that it just barely touches the outside of the image and um, now still if I now hit render nothing will show up because um, I don't really know why but in blender this um, display of velocity which you can see here uh, or the acceleration of this kind uh, is not able to be shown in the render panel so what we are actually doing is we export an OpenGL image sequence. First, well, you, to do this, you click this button here, and uh, this will now just export an OpenGL image. But you can see that the background is like this grayish uh, thing. I want it pitch black, so I will just change the color. And uh, let's do this again. Uh, well, this looks much nicer now. So additionally, I will take this one and give it a material I make it shadeless and um, well let's see what happens now oh yeah let's see okay you can see now the particles have vanished because I left my um, wireframe mode but uh, we can have a pretty easy way around this because this is just our boundary box it doesn't contribute to our rendered image so you just go up here, uncheck view, uncheck the render panel, and uh, let's see how it looks. Nice. We can see uh, our shape of our airfoil. Uh, it's not black over black, so <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, but, you know, it's still a pretty dark image, and these points are pretty small. So what I want to do is increase the actual draw size. Uh, it's also below the uh, display panel and I'll just hit the button I think 7 should be a good number because I want to render in full HD and uh, even though it might look like really big right now if we oops uh, wrong button if we render the OpenGL you can see that it's now at a fairly good size I think it covers up most of the gaps in between but if you increase your particle amount, you can decrease the draw size to make it nicer. So this one, now you can see I've selected acceleration here. This one now exports acceleration. And um, well, one thing first, maybe um, the right button here exports an image sequence. So you just set up your output um, just as usual and then click this button and it will export an image sequence of all your frames with all the changing particles. So in the end you get a video of what you are doing. So, but now for the velocity. I'm going to select velocity and you can see it now turns all pretty much red. That's why there's a max value here. So. I will increase this value until I get a nice picture and you can see it's starting to change and um, I kind of like this one I think uh, maybe a little bit more like this and uh, let's run it again and um, well what you can actually see is that there are like yeah, like small changes over here there's still the shock wave you know and uh, at the 
point in the front of the airfoil, the velocity is zero because of, uh, yeah, of course, dampening. And uh, if you go later into the flow, maybe something like here, and um, now you can actually see it going out here again. And well, you might want to play around with it a little bit because, you know, this looks actually quite nice with a large size. So I will increase my draw size a little much more. And this actually gives me a pretty, pretty nice image. So let's see even more. And uh, this is just like with the other things. It's just playing around until you find a value which fits your simulation, this specific simulation, the best. And this actually gives me back a really awesome uh, image, right? So this is how you do the velocity. Now, for the actual direction, you know, like these aluminium particles here, um, how do we show this? Um, well, you actually check this button over here. And uh, now all these little streams are, have appeared, but still there's like the strange color in the background. So we don't want that. So we just change the draw color to none. And what just happened is pretty awesome because if you now uh, render your OpenGL view, you can actually see like like little aluminium particles floating around your airfoil and they show the direction of the flow. You can see it changing over here, like curving up over the airfoil, curving down below it. And uh, this is actually a pretty nice image, I think. So another thing to note with this is that there are like these little black boxes over here. This is because each of these little white streaks starts up with a black box. So for this, you want to decrease the uh, draw size again. So let's see how this looks. And now this, you can see, looks much better. It gives you a much nicer view of how all the particles are flowing in which direction. Now, um, this actually was the easy stuff. And as you can see, there's basically no render time. It's just an instant image because it's OpenGL. So it's an image of your uh, viewport. But for the density, it might get a little more challenging. So I will change back to velocity. I like the picture. But, you know, it doesn't matter really for uh, our actual picture here. But uh, what we actually want to do is we hit Shift A and add another cube. This cube will be our domain for the, um, yeah, the density really. And we will just like scale it up uh, again. So, whoop, scale it in x axis, like eight and z direction, like uh, make it four. And uh, make sure it's slightly larger than your uh, camera view. And uh, yeah, this is actually quite nice, I think. And we're getting, we're gonna give it a material. We add a new material and select volume over here, turn down the density all the way. I will increase density scale by two and scattering by two. Um, to reduce render time, I just set it to shadeless, doesn't matter. And put my save samples to 0.1 actually. Okay, so let's see for the uh, texture. We're gonna add a new texture and select point density. So yeah. You can guess density, this is what we want. So, yeah, we select our emitter object. Let's just see what's it called. Uh, it's called just plane. So we import the image information from plane, the particle system. Uh, radius uh, should turn to 0.1. And uh, check density and emission over here and emission color. So let's have a look how it looks. But this time we won't render the OpenGL, but just the usual render. Uh, well, you can see a strange behavior here because it seems to be stretched. This is uh, unlike with usual uh, smoke simulation, you want to apply the scaling of the object. So select your domain, hit Ctrl A, select scale. And if we render now, it shows some uh, particles around here. Okay, well, and you immediately, another thing, it's like a little offset, 
and when it's offset you need to apply the location too. So to make this work apply location, rotation and scale and this way it should be fine. So as you see in the image it's just purple. Now let's give it some color and um, as you know high values are usually shown in red so I select here and uh, I'll just go reddish here and low values are green so I just go over here to green and uh, you can see that it automatically creates like the this um, yeah flow between red to green and I want to have a B spline now let's take cardinal uh, this is just a different type of uh, yeah of, of uh, what's it called um, the the change uh, right so let's see how this image looks if we render it and uh, you can actually see now that like here at the edge um, it actually starts to get green but um, this is because we now need to tweak these positions so let's move them like this far to the left and see how this changes the image and um, well, let's put some more and this now is uh, like playing around trying to figure out uh, which are the correct settings here and um, let's do like okay let's see Oh, it's starting to look better actually okay well this is still not good enough I think so what we can actually do is decrease the radius I think so let's try this one and voila we got a green image and uh, so now it's back to tweaking it and uh, finding the right mixture out of uh, high and low values and uh, trying to to see which ones portray it the best and uh, uh, I think I'm kinda happy with this one let's make this one a little bit more okay this one actually looks quite nice you can now see uh, that there's red in the um, higher density parts, so there's green in the low density and um, well this is not very strong so we will work on it in our node editor and uh, we select the uh, what's it called the composition compositor and uh, we will add some nodes so first thing I do is add a color node I will add an color mix node and I'll just select add and um, let me just see how I did it um, okay now I will add the uh, add node and after that I will add another color mix node so put them both in here and I will select multiply this time and I will select an output node and a backdrop to see what we are actually doing. So I'll increase the first one, uh, let's say one, just trying out 1.5 and the second one to 3, which apparently is too much. So decrease it again and increase this one and then can increase this one. And this like kind of like increases our contrast a little bit. And uh, let's see how it looks like. Okay, this is actually quite nice we got you know the red parts are redder now and the green parts are more green and uh, well maybe we could add a little blur in here so it might look like not this sharp anymore you know so like uh, let's stick 2.2 oh. yeah nice and uh, well let me just increase the uh, let's move too much uh, so it's you know like tweaking again and uh, trying to figure a correct um, size oh zero okay, this looks good okay uh, 
you can see it's it's about tweaking and uh, yeah you will you will have to try around a little bit and uh, decrease the step size if you're happy in the end okay this looks much nicer now okay now we got a actually pr quite good image um, it's about tweaking it and uh, playing around with it and uh, in the end you will get a result similar to this and this actually shows the different pressures around it and uh, in the shock wave the pressure is quite high after that it decreases again because of the different flow directions in the mixed mixture zone uh, it will increase again and uh, this is just disturbance from uh, the plane where it actually gets created so to get rid of this disturbance you could move your uh, airfoil to the right uh, elongate your uh, yeah, experiment area to in the end uh, have a longer flow before it actually hits it and so you get a more laminar flow so I hope I could help you and uh, show you a little bit about how to do um, yeah these simulations and uh, Something to note, uh, please note um, that these simulations are in no way uh, physically correct. Uh, they don't show any real values. Um, yeah, it's just just actually funny, funny uh, playing around with it, oops, and uh, trying to make a nice picture. It's it's really nothing of a of a correct um, yeah simulation, and uh, but yeah. Just for fun, I don't know. I would like to do it, and uh, I hope you had fun following this tutorial. Uh, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> it was quite long, so well, I'll see you around.